Okay, so now let's move on to another type of data we can use in TypeScript, and that is a tuple. Now a tuple in TypeScript is a little bit like an array, but whereas an array typically is a collection of values of a single type in no specific order, tuples allow what is essentially an array of values of different types in a very specific order. So the easiest way to understand this is I think by doing an example. So let's do that by making a new variable called person. And then I'm gonna set the type of this variable. So we need a colon first of all. And then for the type, we'll use square brackets. And then inside those square brackets this time, we're gonna say string, then a comma, then number, and then a comma, and then Boolean. And this means that the person value is a tuple, which is like an array, but where the types of values inside it are in this very specific order now. So I could set this now equal to a value, which is square brackets, again, like an array. And now inside here, the first value has to be a string. And the second value has to be a number. And the third one has to be a Boolean. And if we were to try and change the value of one of these things inside the tuple, to a different type. For example, if we try and set the first value to be a Boolean, then we're gonna get an error because that first value must be a string because that's what we specified over here when we typed it. But we can change the value of the string. That's not a problem. It can be whatever string we want. It's the type order within a tuple that really matters. So again, very much like an array where the types inside it are in a specific order. Now, personally, most of the time when I'm working with TypeScript, I won't reach for tuples too often because I always feel like there's a different approach which works better for me. But there are some cases where they're a good option. So now let me just go through a few examples of where we might use one. So then down here, I'm gonna create a new variable called HSLA. And this is gonna be a tuple, so I'm gonna type it as such. And the first value will be a number, then a string, then a string, and then a number. So this is a common format for colors, hue, saturation, luminance, and then this is an alpha channel, so it dictates the opacity. So they have a very unique structure, these kind of color codes. The first one is a number, then it's a string, which could be like a percentage, like 50% or 100% or 70 or whatever, then another percentage, which is a string, and then a number from zero to one. So that would take up this very unique structure. Therefore, I'm using a tuple. So I could say HSLA is now equal to, and the first one is gonna be a number, 200, then a percentage as a string, so 100%. That's why it's a string, because percent is not a number right here. We have to use a string. And then after that, it will be 100, oops, 100% again. In fact, no, we'll do something different. We'll say 50%, and then after that, one, which is the alpha channel, the opacity. All right, so that's one example. Another example would be coordinates. So I could say let x, y be a tuple where they're both numbers. So number and then number. And then I could say that x, y is equal to, I don't know, some random numbers like 94.7. And then the next one could be 20.1, like so. We could also use them inside functions. So I could say function use coords, and that is gonna return a type, which is a tuple, when we have a number and a number, like so. And inside here, we could do some logic to get some coordinates of the user or something. And then down here, we could register them. So I could say the const latitude is equal to 100. These are random numbers. And then the const longitude is equal to 50 and then i could return that tuple so it would be this structure right here that we're returning so a number and then a number so latitude then longitude i could return lat long like so and then i could invoke that function i could say const and i would destructure by saying lat and long would be equal to use coords like so and it knows that this is going to be a number and that this is gonna be a number because that's what we specify right here, a tuple with number and then number. So that's just a few examples of where we could use these tuples. Now, one of the main reasons I often used different data structures instead of tuples in the past was because unless you know what the different values inside a tuple represent, it can be quite hard to figure out what they're meant to be. For example, 
If I didn't tell you this was X and Y coordinates ahead of time, you probably wouldn't know what they are. They're just two random numbers, right? But a couple of years ago, with the release of TypeScript version 4, came with it the ability to have named tuples, whereby when we define a tuple type, we can add names to each value within the tuple. So let's have a little look at how we can do that. So let's create a new variable called user, and I want this to be a tuple, so I will do a colon to type it, and then inside square brackets, we're gonna say the first element will be a string in this tuple, the second one a number. Now, without knowing what this string and what this number represents, it's pretty meaningless, right? So I would like to say what this string is for and what this number is for using a named tuple. And the way we do that is by saying that this is a name property over here. It's not really a property like an object. We're just identifying it. And this second one over here will represent the age, this number, okay? And now if I come down here and say that user is equal to something, if I hover over user first of all, I'm gonna see that the first one represents a name and the second one represents an age. So we get that kind of feedback so I know what I'm gonna put into this tuple now. So I'm gonna say peach and then for the second one, I will say 25. By the way, if I try to put something in that's not a number like true, then we're obviously gonna get an error because it doesn't conform to this tuple type right here where it must be a number. So let's go back to 25 like so. And now also watch this, if I say console.log and then user, and then I'm just gonna get the first index. So it behaves like an array in that respect. We can just get values from a tuple using the index. If I do that, I'm gonna hover over this. Again, if you hover over the zero, it says what the property is. It's a name, okay, and it's a string. So that's named tuples. It just adds a bit more context to tuples, if you like, and it really helps when you're using them, I suppose. All right, cool. So in the next lesson now, we're gonna look at interfaces.